Welcome to our desert island. I am Luke, captain of the island, for some reason. Just because I have the uniform. Do islands have my... captains? <laughs> this one well, yeah, does. Would you be more of a chief? <laughs> no, oh, but if true. the ship has wrecked yes. on the beaches, yeah. then he would have been the captain of the ship that's wrecked. Why we're, And that's why we're on the desert island. Are you saying I would be a bad captain? Is that what you're saying? Well, if you let your ship wreck, then probably, yeah. Okay, I'm Luke, chief of our island. Uh, Matt's here, my second in command. How well, come uh, he gets to be second in command? Because it's your island! This oh, week, well, it's then, your then island. The island! Get the hell off my <laughs> island, you <two. laughs> I don't know where I sit on the island anymore! These are the dramas that shaped us. Spinoza. Descartes. Hobbes. Locke. Freud. Adler. Young Mayor Sullivan Pony Pablo. <laughs> End of lecture. The dramas that defined us. As part of a new initiative christened Truth and Reconciliation, following a miscarriage of justice, parties are invited to engage in dialogue to initiate the healing process. There seems to be an oversight. Some of the officers involved in my wrongful conviction are missing. Superintendent Hastings, as senior investigating officer, represents the whole team. Well, I want them here. Or this new box you need to tick just... Uh, won't get ticked. This is Desert Island Dramas. You still don't get it, do you? Huh? It's ain't about your money, bro. The boy gave you up. That's right. And we ain't had to talk to his ass neither. From the team at the Custard TV Podcast. I'm Luke, editor and runner of the website thecustardtv.com, joined as always by Matt in the north. Hello. And Gary, who this week is completely in the spotlight. Welcome to Desert Island Dramas. Ten shows that we feel, each one of us, has shaped our love of television, shaped us maybe as people, if it's not too melodramatic, and really had a deep effect on what we enjoy on that there telly box. Gary, you got to go first. I think that's difficult. Yeah, I wasn't sure. When you said I was going to go first, I wasn't quite sure whether whether that was a good thing or a bad thing. Because by the time we get to mine, or or Matt's even, if this hasn't worked out, then we can change the format (laughs) for Matt and I. I'm literally an island guinea pig. You're literally a guinea pig on the island. Everybody watches telly. Yep. But why are you somebody who wants to talk about it on a podcast? And, you know, why are you doing this as opposed to just watching telly like everybody else does? Good question. I've always been quite... Have had heavy opinions about what I've seen or watched on television. I'm, I'm very close to my, 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 my uncle who lives in uh, Bournemouth on the south coast. And he started to get me into kind of US drama a long time ago. He and I would talk regularly on the phone about things that we had seen. And, and, and that goes back to, to two shows that are on my list, which I'll come to and, and explain more about yeah. them when we get to them. But we would always, always have conversations that were almost like podcasts. We yeah. would talk about the shows that we had seen. We would say, oh, you ought to try this, you ought to try that. And it kind of grew from there. And then we did do a very short-lived podcast. I got into podcasting through um, Ian Lee, a radio presenter who started doing them. And um, podcasts were very easy to do. You just need either a microphone and some sort of recording device, and you can upload it onto the internet, and others can hear it and you know tell you what you think. They think of your you know your style or your opinions. And we did a very short-lived podcast called the TV Drama Club, which was, in my opinion, was the predecessor to this in my mind for me. Because we didn't, we did kind of more kind of like the style that we did. We did news and reviews. We didn't kind of do anything else that we do. There's not the comedy element, of course. <laughs> uh, no, but, but, which is ironic because you bring most of yeah, that. Yeah, you bring with the your... comedy element. Well, we did try to do it very straight laced, which you know didn't really work out. Which is why it was short lived. But to this <laughs> day, as I, I've mentioned on the other podcast a few times, he buys and sells TV DVD box sets on eBay. His business is knowing what's good and bad to know what's to, to, to buy and to sell. You were watching American stuff because you watched that with him or you preferred yeah. that and then I came on board and said you should watch some English stuff then you did and your horizon I think I was, was always watching slightly. 
stuff, but I don't think I'd ever enjoyed it as much. I think what you did, and, and as I say, is you kind of said, right, you should try this, right, you seem to like this, why don't you try this? It's kind of like mm. that idea that someone that begins to know you says, right, I think you'd really like... This is why this list is going to be my favourite, because I have no idea still what you what Gary definitely will like and what def- Gary uh, definitely I'll... won't like. I think I'm better on comedies. I think I know what he'll definitely like and what he definitely won't like. But think... when you watched all of 13 and all of Critical, mm. I was quite surprised. Yeah, you and I met through another website that we were both writing for mm-hmm. and we did a whole kind of like, there was this whole thing where I live in the UK but like US television and at the time you lived in the US and like yeah. UK television. And that yeah. was the basis of our first podcast, wasn't it? Almost trying to convince the other that we were better. That Since Matt has joined... He has, I, I sometimes feel like you and I are the opposite, and Matt sometimes can be the middling. Yeah, and but also, actually, you were both broadened. Well, yeah, I no, think... but I, that's not always correct, but I also think Matt has also, there, there's a show on here which I think I think very much Matt has been the champion of in our group to start yeah. with as well. I feel like you and I have broadened each other's horizons, Matt has broadened mine further. I don't feel <laughs> like we've had any impact on him at all, so I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to to seeing how his list yeah, is. Um, apart from when you get me to watch something god awful. That's yeah, but I enjoy that. I just That's hate, more for I me than you. you. It makes Brilliant. me hate you a little bit more every day. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the most loving you've ever sounded, and it was so <laughs> awful. Do you want to do it chronologically, or do you want to do um, it in a 10 to 1? I mean, how I've, do you I've, want to do I've your list? It, I think I've done it 1 to 10, in the sense that I think I've done it. Some of them are more how I experienced them at the time of my life and things like that. So you I, be the driver of your own list. Can I drop a few all, re, all very nearly made it on you? I did do a very comprehensive list. I think I've got about 25 shows here. Oh, but wow. I think just some of them, but some of them dipped in quality in later years. Do you years think some or, of them will be in our, on our list? Mm, one or two, but not, no. I'd okay. say maybe there's a chance that two of them will be on okay. your list. And I have tried to go for shows which either I've completed... Or, or... <laughs> there should be about six shows on them. <laughs> or, or that I am still watching. Oh, I mean, okay. I, okay. I, I, so okay. That, that will become obvious later on. The number one show that didn't make it is The Bridge. Um, and <gasps> I think the reason oh. that it, it didn't make the list is because... I, the, I don't know. I, I find the oh, whole wow. Scandinavian. No, I find Nordic noir very interesting. I find it gripping. I find it fascinating. But when I look back on it, I don't have it in the same way that I do these other shows. It's great Fair while enough. I'm watching it. I don't reminisce as much about it as I do the other shows. Wow, okay. For the same reason, I, that I thought that was going to be on your list, so that's interesting. Well, yeah, I thought you did as well. I, I would have thought you would as well. The other one, which um, I don't think either of you would have particularly picked it, unless you know me quite well, is Star Trek: Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a huge Star Trek fan, but for some reason, uh, a lot of the other Star Treks were more kind of like episode of the week. You know, they land on a planet this, or this whatever. Was... This was the one that was all sort of grounded in the one setting, wasn't it? it was Correct, like... yeah. And it was just so political. You know, you had all different... You had Romulans and Kardashians. It was Kardashian. <laughs> 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 I'll say it wrong. Just one. Kim, Chloe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew they all came from another planet. And the Dominion, which was the um, the race beyond the wormhole. And it was just so fascinating. And in its last three seasons, in fact, its last four seasons, just that storyline was, was brilliant. And there... In the last season, really, there was only two standalone episodes. The rest of it was all to do with this one storyline. I mean, that was it. The other one that I would say, and as I say, it, it's one which uh, we all probably, up to the last episode of Series 1, hold very dear, and it is Broadchurch. Ah, okay. It didn't make the list for the purposes of the fact that Series 2 was a disappointment compared to Series 1, I will admit Absolutely. that. But the thrill of Series 1... And and actually, I think actually, I know we're still doing the podcast, but that was kind of, I, I feel like that was a real peak for us. Yes, I agree. The whole build up to the series, you know, and it it, it gripped this country. Let's face yeah. it, it, you know, it was on the front of newspapers, it was it was, was water cooler moments. Yeah, I think I think you know it was on it, it got it was certainly time, on the front maybe. of the Radio Times. It certainly sort of garnered a lot of buzz around our, our, the website you know Luke yeah. did a couple of interviews didn't you 
you had Chris Chibnall on before the sort of whole yeah. it caught people's imaginations and stuff like that and it was a drama a British drama that a lot of people talked about that you don't get a lot with British dramas it's mainly American dramas that get that sort of buzz so I may rewatch it one day but it's one of those things where I look back on now and all I can think of is oh they ruined it so much in my eyes well I will um, I will come on to my number 10 then because it has strong links to Broadchurch it's a superior who done it which I don't think either of you two would potentially pick but it's the first series of Murder 1 now, this Ooh. was a, a a series in America in the sort of mid to late 90s that was shown on BBC Two over here. And it was one concurrent storyline all the way through a 24-episode series. That being uh, the killing of somebody and and the subsequent sort of who done it. There aren't many people in that series that have begun, gone on to be really famous. I mean, uh, the lead actor was quite well known as a bit actor in America, but really this was his starring role. And if anything, I mean, the, the, the kind of guy that you thought it was was a character called Neil Avedon, who was playing like a celebrity who allegedly had raped and killed this woman, which obviously now resonates more now in modern culture than it did then. You know, with the advent of things like TMZ, you know, there are these kind of sensational celebrity moments. But I think this was prior to all of that, probably... Not prior to the internet, but probably prior to the internet fascination we have now. Where were you at this point of your life? I think I was probably one? living at home. I, I, I think I was probably living. I don't mind. No, I think I might have been in the first home I lived at outside. You know, the first sort of you know digs outside of parents' house. And again, this was a lot through my uncle. You know, he was like, oh, "I've seen the first episode of this. You really need to see it." And I, I managed to watch it. I think they showed it on a, a Saturday night and then repeated it through the night on a Thursday or something like that, you know, like BBC Two used to do. And it mm. built steam. You know, they, they managed to get something which everybody wanted to watch. It built up towards the end where I think actually they started giving it, if not a prime time first viewing, then a prime time, you know, second viewing. It was a, a unique in a whodunit because it had a satisfying ending. And it wasn't yeah. telegraphed. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, it was clearly him. It was a shock and a surprise at the end. Do you think if you went back and watched it now, it would hold up? I'm not sure. I think some of the love of Broadchurch is the we don't know who done it until that final episode. Uh, and I don't know with Murder One whether the same because, of course, now that I remember who done it, will I enjoy it as much? And mm. I don't know. The second series was terrible. Uh, <laughs> uh, they never should have done it. They went on and did a different lead investigator in a completely different case, and it <laughs> didn't work. <laughs> Would that have been Murder 2? Well, it, it was called Murder 1. This is why two. Matt's here. The comedy <laughs> <Yeah>. value. <laughs> Puntastic. Puntastic. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's my, my first entry on the list. Did you watch more American stuff with your family as well when you were at home, or did you watch... No, funnily enough, my dad kind of got more into American stuff after I moved out, because, again, I would recommend things to him. He really likes action stuff, so I got him watching 24. In fact, actually, my dad had prostate cancer. There's, there's no sort of, you know, I'm not going to go to... And he spent a lot of time off work um, when he was having his stuff. I bought him about six series of, the, uh, of, um, of 24 to watch, and he loved it, because I know he likes an action drama. Um, so mm. he really got into that and Prison Break, which isn't on my list. That that was a surprise, because I don't think you've ever brought that up in our company. I think well, he has. But... I think, I think I have, but it, it, it's, it's, certainly one of the, it's certainly one of the oldest shows on my list, although there are two that most likely predate it a little bit. I will move on now to um, a science fiction show. I am a bit of a sci-fi fan. There's a couple on Number my nine, list. Number nine, is it, Gary? Number nine, number nine. It's Fringe. <laughs> oh, uh, which you only relatively recently completed. Yes, uh, about, it was more like about 18 months ago that I finished Series 5. Series 5 was, was drastically cut down uh, because of the fact that Fox had decided that the show wasn't as popular, which was a shame. It's a J.J. Abrams created show. This was what he did after he left Lost. But to be fair, it's actually mostly Daniel Orkey and Alex Kurtzman's show and the idea behind it is that fringe science is very much a part of investigations now a lot of people will call this a sort of poor man's x-files and to some extent the similarities are there in the sense of the weird and the wild fringe had much more of a linear storyline 
much more of a of a narrative behind it. No sort of like, oh, aliens are coming. Actually, everything that was weird was shown on the show, and everything was weird. The fact that you communicated with a parallel universe through a typewriter 